This week on Terrible Soldering Jobs. Adam K6ARK found out at Hamvention that I was looking for a two meter amplifier for my car. As he walked through the flea market, he found this. This is a Maha MH-A103 and it's a 30 watt amplifier. It takes in no more than five watts. Once I got home, I tested it and it does not want to chooch at all. I haven't had time to do anything with it because I've been busy skydiving. Well, guess what? It's winter. Time to figure out what is wrong with this thing. Let's put it on the bench, find out what's up. As a mean of testing, I'm going to use my handheld here. This is the, the QRZ Explorer 1 sold by Gigaparts. Since the amp can't take any more than five watts, I don't want to damage the amp. I have this thing set to low. Let me key it up. You can hopefully see the needles. Kilo Niner Oscar Lima testing on 2.7. Hopefully you saw that needle barely move. That means I'm certainly not putting out five watts or more, so I should not be damaging the amp when I test it. Time to put the amp in line and see what happens. So the amp is on. Hopefully you can see that in the doobly-doo there. Kilo Niner Oscar Lima testing. And it's working now. What the hell? This gives me even more reason to wonder what in the world's going on with this thing because it was not working when I tested it and I tested it this summer and I tested it like a week ago. I want to crack this puppy open. Let's see what's inside. Let's see what's going on. Time to crack this puppy open and see what's up. Let's uh, zoom in on here and first of all, see what we see. See if there's anything to of notice here. There are no obvious bent burn marks in these components that I can see here. It is surprising how simple an amp really is. Interesting, there's a little ferrite sitting at the end of a uh, an inductor there. Nothing looks apparently burnt on here. Makes me wonder what's going on. This is the power switch. That's what this big heat heavy lead is for. Positive comes in here, goes into a common bus there, and then goes hops right from there all the way back here to the switch. We have some inductors that look a little deformed, but then again, that shouldn't keep it from working. Anything loose, anything broken. I don't see anything burnt and nothing seems to be loose or broken. All the solder joints seem to be solid. I'd have to take this PCB off the heat sink to see if there's anything happening on the back side of this puppy. Oh, here we go. That that's apparent. Actually, you know what? You can't see that, can you? Check that out. I don't know if you're going to be able to see that, but that is cracked. I'm not sure if that's even connected. Oh, no, it's floating. There we go. Uh, let's see. Where is... I'm going to use a sticker I have here to show you. I think I found the problem. That is floating there, and it may be that it's making contact every once in a while, not always. One of the SO239s is not... There we go. There we go. I don't know if you can see that. I have... I'm going to take this here and show you that I can put a card between the tip of the SO239 and the lead that is supposed to take it to the PCB. Which one of these two is it? It's the, uh, it's the antenna port. Oh, there we go. Look at that. Look at that. That sucker's loose. Definitely not. There we go. It's a whole lot easier to see now not making a connection at all or if it's making a connection it's when this when the coax is plugged in and pushing fairly hard on it to keep that bit of a connection going that's an easy fix i think let me see if i have one of these uh so239s around here and if i do i'll try to fix it not i may have to reuse that one and just make a new lead coming off the pcb well i have a spare so239 here but i can't find a good way of getting a wrench on this and actually getting it detached there are no clearances here and in order to take that off i'm gonna have to take the back panel off and then take the pcb off the heat sink slide everything out and then make the repair I'm going to try to go the easy way. I took uh, an Allen wrench that was close enough in size and got that center pin of the SO239 to turn 180 degrees. What I'm going to try to do is make a solder bridge there and hopefully that's all it needs to get fixed. I need to put some pressure on there. Oh wow, look at that. When I connected the cable, I was trying to use the cable to push that in, but it retracted it, so that makes matters even worse. I'm just going to have to hold it with one hand. Oh, that's going to be difficult. How do I do this? Well, 
I'm just gonna wing it. I'm going to hold this with my finger while I heat that up and hope that the solder that's already on there melts enough. Take a little bit of my own solder here and have it ready for adding. I'm gonna wait until this gets up to temperature because that's, that's a big piece of metal. So it's gonna take a bit to heat it up enough. Okay, we're up to 350C. How do I do this? I need to have three hands to be able to do this, maybe five. You know what? Let me, let me give it a touch of flux on there. This week on Terrible Soldering Jobs. Sinking quite a bit of heat. There we go. I'm starting to see the flux smoke up a bit. Hopefully that's enough. Give that a minute to cool and come back to it and see if it's holding mechanically and then we'll test it electrically to make sure that it's uh, not shorted and that it is passing squigglies from this end to that end. That should be cooled off enough. It's multimeter. Continuity there. Ground to ground. Okay, that's good. Ground to center pin. Nothing there. That's good, right? And then center pin on the outside to center pin on the inside. Continuity. Question is, is that going to be mechanically strong enough to actually work long term? I don't know. We're going to find out because I am about fairly certain this is not moving anymore. Let me see if I can push that connector forward at this point. Nope, it's not moving forward. Before it was pl playing back and forth in there. Time to put power to this and put it on a meter. Let's see if uh, it chooches. Well, here we go. Let's see if uh, it's going to work. We have power. It is set on FM. Preamp is off. Turn on the HT. K9 OL testing, 270. <laughs> Did you see that? 30 watts. Let me switch to 5-2. That way I'm not messing with people on the receiver. And I'm on, and I'm on medium power on the HT, which I think is 2.5 watts. Kilo Niner Oscar Lima testing, 5-2-0. Okay, so that's 20 watts. So 20 watts was, was, was with low power on this HT. I got to look up and see what low power on this HT is, but I think low power is one watt or maybe even a half a watt on this. Now I've just changed it to medium power. K9 OL testing, 520. And medium power got me 25 watts. Do I dare attempt high power on this HT? It's supposed to be five watts, but I don't know. I Okay, we're on high power on the HT. Let's see what we get out of this puppy. Kilo Niner Oscar Lima testing, 520. And the meter showed 35 watts coming out of it. And in reality, this is supposed to be a 30 watt amp. So close enough for government work, right? I think I'm going to just use medium power on it and go from there. 25 watts ought to be enough for the use I have for it. That turned out to be a way easier fix than I thought it would be. I expected to have to hunt through every component on that PCB to get an answer and then I would have to go find that one component and fix it, assuming I could actually find it. I'll take all the wins that I can get. That's a win. That's an easy win. SO239, super easy to solder up with a, with a bit of solder and bridging it. I wish I had a way of removing the old one and putting a new one in because I don't quite trust that one right now. But that's going to be way more work to me than I want to put into it right now. If it, be, if it breaks again, I'll do it then. But until then, I'll leave it alone. Good enough sometimes is good enough. We'll catch you guys on the next one, 7-3.